Our story is all about Alice. Here's Alice. And Charlie, the cello she has given for her ninth birthday. Here's Charlie. The moment Alice sees Charlie, she wants to pull her bow across his strings immediately. But it might be a bit harder than she thought. First, she must learn the different parts of the instrument. The scroll, the peg box, the neck, the waist, the bridge, the fine tuners, and the tailpiece. But all Alice wants to do is pull her bow across Charlie's strings. But after a few lessons, she learns to make a pleasant noise. She discovers that sometimes Charlie can be quite cheeky. And sometimes he can be quite sad. After a few weeks of hard practice, Alice has learned her first tune. And this is the tune she decides to play at the end of term school concert. And here we are at the concert. The children are in their places. The mums and dads are waiting expectantly. The head teacher steps forward. comes a flute solo. A flute duet. A flute trio. And the entire orchestra. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. But one little girl sits in her seat petrified. Alice is supposed to play her cello, but she's too scared. She knows her piece very well. It starts to go round in her head.
The room goes silent. All eyes are on Alice. She's played her piece loads of times at home. But to play it in front of everyone? No, she can't do it. She gets to her feet uncertainly. The audience starts to applaud. But Alice's courage fails her. And she, she runs! <laughs> wrenches open the door of her parents' car, sits in the back and cries her eyes out. Back in the hall, the concert is soon over. The parents and children have gone. Charlie lies in a corner, discarded, forgotten, surrounded by other forgotten items. Suddenly, the door opens and the school caretaker, Mr. Grissold, comes in with a large wheelbarrow. Clear the hall, clear the hall, let's clear all the rubbish away and tidy it up for another day. Clear the hall. Charlie is frightened. He sings to himself to keep up his spirits. In goes a brand new cagoule. In goes a pair of ballet shoes. In goes his friend Vera, the violin. Mr. Grissold is getting closer. Charlie's in his dark corner. Maybe he won't be seen. Charlie's heart is beating faster and faster. Mr. Grissom is getting nearer and nearer. Finally, he spots him. He picks Charlie up. And casually tosses him into the wheelbarrow. Charlie finds himself in a skip. He looks around and sees he's surrounded by rubbish. Put up to trash, I'm put up to trash. I tell you my value has taken a crash. The skip is on a truck, and the truck slowly starts to move. down the winding lanes, it begins to get faster and faster. The bumps become bumpier and the swerves become swervier.
And with a bump, Charlie falls into four busy lanes of traffic. Car horns beep at him angrily from all sides. On the pavement, dazed, damaged, and out of breath. He looks around, and there, right next to him, is a mysterious old man selling balloons. The balloon seller walks over to Charlie and calmly ties the bunch of balloons to his scroll. Almost immediately, a wind starts to get up. Doing up there. 
Thank you for flying Cello Airlines. <laughs> but Charlie isn't in the water as he'd expected. His strings are caught in the branches of some trees overhanging the river. He hangs there precariously. <laughs> Charlie is soon joined by two magpies. He tries to talk to them. Colourly birds, if you please, seem to be caught in these trees. Hello, 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 hello. What have we here? We are much snow. Well, it's time to a balloon, simply for playing a tune. That's as may be, well, I'm to see. Can we see playing with the one entity? But I am just. Well, you may have been expecting a splash, and so was Charlie. But instead, there was a bit of a... And a bit of a... And a bit of a... And Charlie had landed on the deck of a river barge. But this was no ordinary barge. royal personages approached him, Charlie was wondering desperately what he should do. Maybe he should play a royal tune. But he only knows one. Ah well, here goes nothing. <laughs> Charlie didn't know, couldn't possibly know, was that the princess's uncle was actually the real Duke of York. And when they were up, they were up. And he'd once taken a platoon of men on a training exercise in the Lake District. And when they were down, they were down. And he'd got completely lost. And when they were only halfway up. And they'd been up 27 hills before they had to be rescued by air ambulance. They were neither up. The Grand Duke's face turned to thunder. Charlie realizes he's made a blunder. Oh no, he's going, he's going to go. Run for your life, Charlie, my friend. Be he to sign, he's done happy yet. Off on the deck, fast as you may. And Charlie takes to his heels with the beefy to right behind him. And behind him, the Grand Duke. And behind him, Her Highness Princess Matilda and all her ladies in waiting. Finally, Charlie is cornered in the prow of the boat. There's nothing else for it. He stands on the tough rail and, and jumps. Splash. Thank you. 
Charlie is feeling very uncomfortable. Little silver minnows are flitting in and out of his forte holes. And as if that isn't enough, a Spanish crab comes along and jumps right on top of him. But after all the fish and crustaceans have been chased away, Charlie is feeling quite lonely on the river floor. He begins to wonder if he will ever escape or if he's destined to end his days a soaking piece of mouldy wood, never again to bring forth beautiful music. appears from nowhere, catches hold of one of Charlie's strings, lifts him up out of the water, into the air, and throws him onto the bank. The angler is amazed. It's not a fish, it's not a fowl, like nothing I've lifted before. Amazing the scum on the river's floor. Not a fish. brushing Charlie's strings. I want to chase 
think you got the upper hand. I'll take your slipper shoe and have a right good shoe. I'm not a hop, I'm not a crop, I'm just an ordinary dog. And the dog will run all day, want to play the games you play. When another dog comes by, got a special way of saying hi. So won't you play with me? We got the world to see. I'm not a hop. But Charlie is just too tired to play with the dog, and the dog shows his displeasure in the only way it knows how. Along comes the dog's owner. her decide.
herself walking down the long aisle towards the stage. Charlie's strings are vibrating with excitement. Alice gets nearer and nearer to the front. She slowly climbs the steps to where the maestro is waiting for her. He's still holding Charlie. So this is your very own child, and you'd like to take it back home with you. He looks like a very nice fellow, but he needs a good polish and a touch of grip. But just as Alice is about to reach out and take Charlie from the maestro, he stops her and says, But we can't let you go away. 